What's up everyone and welcome to a brand new episode of the Battery Talk. Today we are going to talk about battery module and pack cyclers. These devices are made to charge and discharge batteries. Due to the increasing requirements of uh, battery driven vehicles in terms of performance and durability, um, also the requirements and specifications for battery cyclers are rising. Uh, to talk about the challenges of the development of these devices, we are going to meet Seat Butkovic, the Department Manager for Product Management of um, Battery Emulation and Testing Products. Follow me. How are you, Seat? Uh, thank you, David. How are you? I'm very good, thanks. So uh, back there we were talking about the increasing power demand for battery uh, cyclers. Uh, what can you tell us about it? Yeah, increased power means always a uh, big space needs, so huge systems in the past. And this was always an issue uh, when, when we started to plan facilities, where to place the equipment, you have always this challenge, so no matter where you want to place it. Um, and therefore we need really a good coordination and cooperation with our facility planners to overcome this issue. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah, great that you mentioned the facility planners. So we're going to have a bad talk on this topic later, where we focus on the bigger picture. But right now we focus on your challenges. So what exactly is the challenge when it comes to battery pack and, and module cyclers when integrating them into a facility? I mean, um, with big, huge systems, you have always the issue that you cannot come close to the UUT because the space around the test bed itself is always limited. So you, so you have often to place the equipment far away of, of the UUT and then you have long cables and this makes the solution on the one side expensive and complicated, on the other side, you, you you have then some troubles with, with the performance of the system. And then you have to tune, uh, the, you have to talk to your control engineers to, to meet these performance requirements of the customers. Even if we are able with the e-storage system to, to run 2000 amps within one millisecond with any significant overshoot, mm -hmm. um, you have then sometimes just the limit of physics that you cannot meet the performance because there is too much cable in between. Okay, right. So uh, at a certain point, you're going to reach this limit. And is there anything you can do? I mean, if you reach a physical limit, basically, I'm thinking uh, it's over, you cannot do anything. But uh, is there anything you can do to even increase uh, the power even more or uh, put it together to, to, to get it to get more power density? Yeah, um, there is a chance by using exactly the new technologies like the e-storage SIG or other products of ABL, what are SIG based like the Spectra family. Um, and I think we are at a point in ABL where we're dominating the power electronics. So we have now close to two, decade, 20, two decades of, of experience in, in electrification and over 2,500 HV system installed in the field. And you get this feeling what's the next and and i think with the development what we are doing now is exactly that we can see already the first improvements and you can see it in in that that we that we reduce the space to a significant small size so that we can exactly overcome this issue with, with and at the same time we increase the power density, so the systems have, are more powerful and have more capabilities mm -hmm. to get more current and more power out of one unit. Okay, so I'm hearing it's it's all about uh, this uh, SIG technology, silicium carbide, about uh, high power density, about high voltage applications, everything pointing towards more power. Uh, how do you predict the future in, in, in this uh, development? Is it going to be even more powerful in the future? Um, I mean, it's, it, it was difficult to predict this. So in the past, the way of electrification in automotive industry was, I would say, foggy. So not clear where, where the direction will be. It started with hybrid applications. Today, today we see it much clearer. So we have already a lot of BEF vehicles on the road. We have plug-in hybrids and yeah, traditional hybrids. And I think the last two years we had an acceleration exactly in, in, in this that, that we now becoming more clear 
what's going on in the future in mm -hmm. automotive. Okay, but uh, we're still talking about passenger cars, right? So what can you tell me about other applications like um, heavy duty applications, uh, marine, aviation or whatever there is out there? This will be a challenge in the future, especially for our customers who are let me see, dealing with, with test facilities. Uh, exactly these customers need to cover this huge bandwidth between passenger cars and, and other applications like heavy duty. So mm -hmm. you need equipment what is able or capable to cover both at the same time, um, but not, let me say, um, install everything and, and have a huge test field. So you have also to keep an eye on how much you install and um, how you use your equipment. So you need a kind of modularity and of the equipment to be more efficient. Okay, so it's uh, different devices, but uh, you, you, you can provide a solution for, for every branch, so to say, for every industry. Uh, I would say yes, but it's not all about that. So you need also some intelligence. So together with our automation systems and with small smart switching cabinets, we are able to, to switch devices between test beds, to share devices, to increase the power, to, to yeah, to, to increase the, the, the use case of the device. Mm -hmm. And by using this aut uh, automated switching cabinets, we are able to, to provide no care solutions for our customers like, um, I don't know, so that they don't need to care about uh, what's going on. Just by finger tipping on a touch screen, they move the whole system from one to the other test bed by switching all the power lines, all the sense lines, communication lines, everything. So the safety lines, the, the system and the automation system are, let me say, taking exactly this from the customer and we provide a no care solution for, for, our, for our customers. Okay. So I understand that for the customer, the main challenge is to uh, put the entire equipment together in the right configuration, where of course AVL is supporting. Um, how do you manage to effectively uh, um, uh, handle this, this or operate this equipment in an, in an efficient way if there are so many variables? Yeah, I mean, we're combining. So it's not just the case that we switch the cabinets between the test bed. We have also other technologies like dynamic power sharing, where we use our DC bus to, to shift the power between test beds. Uh, without any switching. So you connect them directly and we manage the power share between the different test bits internally inside the system. So, um, and other features like the overload capability uh, gives the customer also some possibilities to cover these certain peaks if, if, if we have some issues with, with the power. Okay, so uh, you're also planning for uh, peak testing. Uh, that's great to hear. Um, so, uh, how does it go when you consider entire applications and use cases? And where do you see AVL's future when it comes to uh, system solutions for the customer? I mean, testing will change a little bit. So, with the new technologies, uh, we get more possibilities. So, like uh, using high frequency switching devices to, to tackle the field of uh, power hill testing. Uh, so hardware in the loop testing um, or doing, for example, I don't know, um, impedance spectroscopy directly out of the device by using the high frequency switching. And just to take an example, so with the e-storage system, we are already today able and capable to, to provide two kilohertz AC signals uh, overlaying on, on, the, on the DC bus and with for example, the e-storage ripple generator, we can go also up to 200 kilohertz. Okay, so speaking about 200 kilohertz of AC, uh, I was thinking that uh, uh, batteries are all about uh, DC. Uh, why are we in the AC world No. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult to explain. So, but um, if, if you want to, to know much more about aging uh, of, of batteries, uh, we know it from the, from the cell, testing application that you use electrochemical impedance spectroscopy to, to see how your chemistry is, is built up and how good is the, the mixture. But the same, let me say, technology you can use to, to do analysis on aging of your UUT or 
to see the state of health. And by doing this test again and again over a certain period, you can already see, okay, how, how is the state of health of my battery, mm -hmm. for example, and how the, the aging developed over the, the, the test cycles. And this is, let me say, a new way how to develop and how to get prediction on how long my battery will work in, in, a, in a real application. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so uh, we heard a lot about uh, SIG technologies, uh, switching and shifting. Uh, what, uh, how would you conclude and come up with a, a takeaway for the audience? Yeah, as, as I mentioned, so I think we should use the new technologies to improve our systems, to improve the size, to improve the efficiency, to get more out of the system, to, to, to be more efficient on one side and, and also to, to use less energy on, on, on the testbed to, to reduce our CO2 footprint, because this will also maybe be a key factor in the future when we talk about testing. Um, the second thing I would mention is, is maybe uh, to make the stuff intelligent. So not we talked today a lot of uh, hardware testing and, and equipment, but I think it's a combination what you need to use. It's to combine the hardware, so the real hardware testing with virtual testing and combining these two worlds with mm -hmm. like the Hill applications uh, where, you, where you optimize your process and with new intelligent algorithms uh, you get this possibility to, to come down with the time what you need to spend to do your tests. And this is, the, like, I think, the benefit we should take and we should focus in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, third, I think the most important is, um, I think our passion for electrification and, and this new technology, this transformation, um, our contribution to this is that we do everything for our customers, for our partners, to bring new products on the market, what makes exactly this transformation easier and better in, in, in a greener and a sustainable new future. So I, I think we are on a good path uh, and yeah, our heart beats electric and the passion is here and we are here for our customers, yes. Uh, that's great to hear that uh, you and your team are so passionate about this. Uh, Seat, uh, thank you for the interesting insights and uh, thanks for your comments and for your future predictions. Uh, thanks to the audience for watching. Uh, it was a, a, a great episode. Uh, don't forget to hit our webpage. Don't forget to contact us and uh, stay safe and stay charged. Mm -hmm.